Well, I need oh, to talk to Doug. Doug, why don't you unmute? It looks like Doug has a uh, helper. Here Thank you. That's my daughter, <laughs> Heather. She Hi, Heather. Hi. Uh, I was raised in Glendale, and it, when I graduated from Glendale High, I went into the Navy the following fall, 1942. Joining the Navy as an enlisted man and hoping to be on a ship, but I never ended up on a ship. I was put underground in Hawaii for the entire war in communications. We handled all the communications for the entire Pacific. But what I want to tell you folks, and I was really surprised, one day I was in the Quonset hut up on the main deck of our building area. So we, we serviced tele teletype equipment and each end of the Quonset hut was open with a screen to keep the flies out. But I looked towards Pearl Harbor, 20 miles away, and there was a big black column of smoke. Wow. This is in 1945. Well, I ran downstairs to where our teletypes were all on, in operation. And normally they were in five letter code, but they went to plain English. Wow. Directing the traffic in Pearl Harbor to other areas. And what had happened, a Japanese two-man sub had gotten into the harbor and put a torpedo into one of the many ships tied alongside each other, getting ready that night to go out and rendezvous to take Guam back. Well, to jump ahead, after the war, I went to Glendale College and my law professor drew me aside and he said, were you in the service? I said, yeah. He says, were you at Pearl? I says, yeah, I was stationed in Waiwa. Anyway, he says, well, were you there when that attack occurred? And this was the second Japanese attack that was never publicized to the American people. We lost 138 men in that attack. And he was a Marine officer. And during that night of that attack, he said he had to stay up all night making up a new list so that, that rendezvous could take place on schedule. Well, I thought you'd like to know a little bit of American history. Yeah. That the American yeah. people never heard about. Well, End of story. <laughs> Otherwise, I could go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> so that is an amazing story and no we don't learn about these things i think there are a lot of heroes and a lot of battles that we never know about so how did um obviously that's something that is set with you for the rest of your life doug yeah. so how does that um how does that experience play into memorial day for you losing 138 marines yeah. really touch me deeply. Yeah, that sounds like the memory that um, that brought it home for you. Wow. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. That is a different kind of shock, seeing it from far away and not being not being in the middle of it. All of it is hard, but thank you for that. Cynthia I just wanted to add to what uh, Mr. White said uh, was that uh, uh, if you visit to the Punch Bowl in Hawaii 
Uh, it's in a, a huge burial ground, but uh, there are shrines that show all the 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 what the the war scenes. The uh, there are mosaics of the all the war. What are they called? Uh, scenarios. Every mm -hmm. one of them. So that it's all the islands, you know, China, Japan, uh, Russia, all of it is in there. It's very interesting to see. It's wor well worth a day trip, really. Uh, how many people have been to the punch bowl in Hawaii? You raise your, there you go. It's actually um, a local destination. I, I grew up in Honolulu, um, and whenever we had visitors, um, all of the war memorials were a must visit for anybody um, that comes to the state. Um, Punchbowl is one of them, and um, the Pearl Harbor um, Memorial. And um, uh, the story that Doug just shared is actually shared with the local mm. children <laughs> in Hawaii because um, that is part of their um, direct history. <clears throat> their state I do, history. The state history, yes. And I, I do remember um, hearing that story as a child, but I realized that um, uh, we're fortunate we don't, um, we had more opportunity to hear direct stories from veterans than um, some people in the other parts of the country. It's true. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Well, also the military uh, uh, also participates in parades and that kind of thing. They have a wonderful military band. Um, and uh, I just wanted to mention too that we have a uh, relatives buried there too. Uh, the Kosh uh, Henry Koshig and his, and his wife. Thank you. Mm -hmm.